On the Wado Radio Show. Yes, it's DJ Wado. It's the Wado Radio Show. It's more than music. It's ministry, man. And uh, I love when we can have newer artists on the show, man, and introduce you guys to some people that I'm really feeling. And we have one such artist with us on the line right now, man. Jared Sanders from Fredericksburg, VA. What's up, my brother? Hey, what's good, man? Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. Well, that's good, man. Um, it's good to, as I was mentioning to you before we went on the air, man, it's good to finally talk to you, talk to you, man. We've been on the text message for a little bit, man. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, brother. Um, well, first, man, uh, I just want to congratulate you on this new album. Uh, it's really dope. Really dope. Uh, really creative. I think you provide definitely a fresh perspective in this scene. And you have been for, for quite some time, but I feel like you're... You're getting more and more exposure now, man. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that, man. That's love. Absolutely, absolutely, man. So, um, let's 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 talk a little bit about you, man. For people who aren't familiar with Jared Sanders, man, what's what's your story, bro? Oh, uh, man, I actually, uh, it's funny, man. People gonna laugh at this. Like, I started in the choir, man. I was a singer way before I ever rapped. <laughs> like, like, I, <laughs> bro, like real talk. I sung way before I ever rapped. So, um, you were singing kinda, solos, or you was just a member of the choir? No, no, no. I was singing solos, man. Oh wow, I you could, was killing I, it. I, I could, yeah, I could get down, man. I could get down for real. And um, you know, and you know, matter of fact, when I went to college, like I was in the concert choir, man. I was wow. What college? Know, traveling uh, Florida A and M, fam. Okay. You, man. Oh, yo, you um, was really doing it. Yeah, yeah, we was doing it for real. Um, you know, and then uh. You know, I was doing, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, once I did that, I did some R&B records, some pop records, and, you know, and then I uh, transitioned, man, to uh, starting to rap a little bit more, because uh, I actually talked about it on the record on the album, know about it. Like, my freshman year uh, in college, we had a little apartment complex called Palmetto North Apartments, and, like, yo, we we took, like, some some tape and like one of them little uh, computer monitor microphones is like, and it was like, we hung it from the ceiling and like hung a stocking, you know, cap around like, and made a little pop filter. It was the most bootleg joint ever. Like we didn't have nothing running through the mic. It was kind of like, we was playing it off of the speakers on the desktop computer and then just rapping in the mic. The closer you were to it, the more you pick up the vocals. Um, and it was, it was so bootleg, but like, uh, that's, that's where we started at, man. I had a, a joint on there. We was jacking beats and, you know, trying to get our little rap thing going. Um, and, uh, from there I, uh, started rapping a lot more, man. I was still singing, but I was rapping a lot more then. Um, and then, uh, you know, once we did that, I was, I started getting in the, you know, the secular side of rap music first. Um, and I, you know, I got a little buzz, man, like four, three, four years ago, I got a little buzz, man, it was on, you know, Sway, you know, the wake up show, and, sure. you know, with Sway and King Tech and, you know, getting, you know, a lot of push from like two dope boys and like DJ Booth and they, they actually premiered, um, my first two EPs and, you know, and then I got, uh, you know, then I got with moved back home cause I was kind of broke and struggling. And then, uh, you know, because I was out there living with my uh, girl um, in college at the time. And then, um, you know, I ended up dropping out of college and moving up to New Jersey, man, living at my ex-girl's, like, mom's crib. Like, she had, like, an extra bedroom. <laughs> and uh, You got I was, a crazy was, story, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's wild, bro. Like, And then, you know, when I got super broke, I got tired of running from home. So, man, I came back to... Uh, to VA. Um, well, what part of Jersey in, you was in? Orange, man. Like I was Bro, literally that's... like down the street from me, so Orange, man. Yeah, like, you was, was that's <laughs> you you about 20 minutes from me, bro. That was like 20 minutes from me. Yeah, I was uh right uh, right next to uh Star Tavern, man. Oh, the, the like, pizza literally. joint. Yeah, the pizza spot like wow. literally right around the corner from Star Tavern, man. Wow. Um, and uh you know, I did that for about a year, then I got, you know, uh girl sick and I, you know, moved back to Florida, went back to uh uh, Tallahassee, man, and, you know, got tired of living there, so I went back home, man, um, stayed with my folks and got on my feet, and then I met now my now wife when I came back home, man, so, uh, you know, doing that, then switching over, uh, serving in the church, and, you know, because she wasn't going to let me be a heathen forever, 
<laughs> you know, so I started, you know, I started serving in the church and, you know, then I started working in youth ministry, even though I was putting out all this secular music. And I was like, yo, I can't be preaching on Sunday and cursing in the pulpit. So wow. I uh, I decided to to make the transition then because my wife wasn't going to co-sign it. Um, you know, it literally ended like a couple years ago. Uh, my Me and my wife was only married a couple months. And I was like, yo, babe, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put out this last secular project and then I'm going to make all this Christian rap. And then my wife was like, nah. Like, I can't support that. Like, I'm not going to support that. Wow. And so, um, you know, once she said that, like, I remember boo-hooing because I was like 99% done with the album. And I called up my old distributor and was like, yo, I can't put this album out. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, uh, we, we, we didn't have a falling out, but it was definitely uh, a change in the relationship. And, you know. Sure. And then, uh, you know, about a, about a year and a half later, you know, I had another album ready to go, uh, you know, and that was my first album, uh, Daylight Savings Time, that came out like, what, I think it was two years ago now, almost. What's been the response from, you know, in this in this two years from people that were familiar with your old music to, you know, this this new vibe you're on now? You know, I think... Um, I think it's been pretty supportive. And I think the reason why is because there was always morality in my music. Like even when I was cursing, you know, sure. like I was even then I was I was kind of the dude that was trying to apply, you know, wisdom to 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 rap anyway. Um, and so when I made the transition, sure, some people thought it was going to be weird, you know, if I started mentioning God and music. Um, but then once they had a chance to hear, you know, how genuine it sounded. You know, they were like, oh, yeah, I could get behind this. You know, I got, you know, I got fans that, you know, I got atheists and agnostic fans, you know, that, that mm-hmm. are like, yo, I appreciate your conviction um, just just for, you know, tying in real life um, and tying in, you know, how uh, your faith ties into your perspective. And so these are people who don't believe in God at all um, or, or, you know, believe in Allah or believe in whatever they believe in. And they sure. still appreciate what it is that i do so the support's been great why not just go back to the old distributor you know what i mean like you know if they didn't they didn't want to you know you were you were going to do the secular album and then you didn't put that out why not just give them a christian record well the funny thing is um i kind of i kind of did in a in a way like because the old label distributor i partnered with um the the boss of it he actually was partnered with soul spasm okay. um, recordings and soul spasm is who put out, like he made the segue and tied the bridge for uh, me to do the project for daylight savings time with soul spasm. Um, and, you know, ultimately I think, you know, in hindsight, I think the thing that, that kind of changed uh, the project was the fact that, um, they they marketed it as a hip hop record. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So so when people like the hip hop community loved it, but nobody in CHH had ever heard of it. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like so so a lot of the CHH presence that I had was really from me working. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't it wasn't because of what the distributor had done. And so, you know, when you go on Pandora and you hear, you know, records from Daylight Savings Time, like they follow by like in the club for fifty cent. <laughs> so, like, so so like i literally had my pastor was like yo i see the jared sanders pandora station and then they played a record of mine and then the joint followed up with like eminem the way i am and i'm like wait a minute like <laughs> you know, so, so yeah they distributed it like a hip-hop album man so yeah. um you know in hindsight now with this one they they started working it a little different i think the algorithms tied into who i was collabing with so people were like, oh, okay, so those are more Christian, you know, rap artists. So we, we might couple it with them a little bit more. Sure. It's it's interesting, man, because <clears throat> um my career, I actually started DJing in the clubs and all of that. So I, I definitely was like relating to your story a lot. My story is actually kind of similar to yours. But um the thing that I, I, I think is really interesting is you were – Serving in the church, doing secular music, got convicted and said, yo, I really need to use this gift for the Lord. Right. And, and and I think what's happening a lot in the community now is 
a lot of people are now trying to break out of CHH. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like yeah. it's like this reverse conundrum going on right now. So I'm saying you you started making Christian rap at a real interesting time, brother. Yeah, I know, right? Like I got over here with the expectation that like it was going to be the complete opposite of yeah. you know what I had grown accustomed to on the secular side and I, I realized that it is very similar. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know it was going to be like that, but at the same time, I mean, it's not surprising, you know, cause I think everybody believes that, you know, there are a lot of people that have the mission field that believe that, you know, their message isn't, shouldn't just be for believers. You know, their message should be, um, uh, for non-believers. I think the difference between me and some others is like, I, I've been over there, you know what I'm saying? So I can, I can, I can speak to a lot of those things because I've been over there and, and I could do it and approach people in a way and speak about things in a way that they would feel like, Oh, so that's what you mean by that. You know, whereas some people who have, you know, built their, their whole resume on CHH side transitioning over there, they're received a little bit differently. Um, you know, and I think it's just, it's just how it goes, man. I don't, um, I don't know how I didn't aim for it to be that way, you know, but, um, you know, I guess that's just a, a level of respect because I got my hands dirty a little bit. Yeah, and I think, too, everybody's got to follow their convictions. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, your story is real interesting because obviously, you know, you got convicted at a certain point and, you know, and it's coming from a place like from your wife, that adds a whole other level of, you know, um, I guess just intrigued to it to me man you know yeah yeah no doubt yeah so that's that's good man i've uh i've been hearing some things that there's been a lot of people interested in signing you or um you know that kind of thing man like are you are you looking to make some different moves or you know you you think you staying on the route that you're on or you know I mean, I, I've I've never been the person that's averse to to signing a deal. Um, I think it's all about the right situation. Like, I mean, you know, the, as it stands right now, I'm not I'm not signed to anybody. But um, I mean, there's definitely been offers. Um, there's definitely been offers, and you know, sometimes you just gotta you know hold off until you get the right one, and or, or what one benefits you know both sides mutually as opposed to just you know, one sided because I'm, I'm a big fan in, of, of business. Right. And yep. I'm a big fan of uh, leverage. Yep. Um, and, <laughs> Who is it? And, like, Everybody likes yeah, leverage. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big fan of, I'm a big fan of leverage. So it's kind of one of those things. It's like, all right. Um, word. So, so you, so you want to sign, like what, what can you offer me? And, and, and I think that the offer that you get is based upon what they feel like you can bring. Yeah. Like what, you know, what you can bring back. And I feel like I could bring quite a bit to, you know, labels, whether, whether CHH labels or, you know, more so on the secular distribution side. Like I've, I've been on both sides. I've had offers from both sides. So it's just a matter of understanding um, what wants to be accomplished. And uh, if we can come to that common ground and I feel like I'll have the ability to do what I'm convicted to do and what's been bathed in prayer, then, you know, we, we good. I just haven't uh, signed anywhere. Yeah. What, what would you say you're, you're, I mean, it's, I think especially now, man, since you, you have like a lot of experience on both sides of the coin, like right. on multiple sides of the industry, man, what, what, what it is it that you think you're trying to accomplish in the next five, 10 years or whatever? Um, You know, the, the, the wild part about it is I, I I I really have been in you know into the teaching uh, aspect for a long time, so I'm pretty sure that you know in the next five to ten years I'll probably be the guy that's that's mentoring or a and ring or shepherding or pushing somebody to their purpose, sure. as opposed to being the guy at the front. Um, you know, and that's just because you know I think that there's always I think there's always a shelf life to being the front runner. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like, and there's a, there's a price to pay for being the front runner as well, um, and you know, I think ultimately for me, you know, I, I love seeing like encouraging, you know, people that are coming along. You know I'm, I'm not I'm not that dude that's like stingy with the retweets, you know what I'm saying? Or like <laughs> that, or stingy with the, you know, comments or whatever. So so be, and, and, and I think primarily is because 
sooner or later you might need them people on the way down. You yep. know what I'm saying? So yep. so I yep. kind of look at it from a different perspective. Yep. Um, so yeah, for me, you know, five, you know, hopefully within the next five years though, I've kind of, I've kind of gotten to the point where, you know, my, my family is, is doing all right. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And, uh, you know, but because the thing that I realized about CHH, which is actually, um, not unlike the secular side, man, is that, you know, a lot of the dudes is really running the game and moving the units around here. They the older dudes, man. Yep. Like, like it yep. ain't, <laughs> it ain't the yep. young guys. You know, yep. Like, yeah, it's sure. The young guys are getting a lot of the buzz, yep. you know, but, but it's the old dudes, older dudes that is running the game still, man. So I wouldn't mind sitting in the company of being the older guy who could look back at the career and say, yeah, you know, I did good. You know what I'm saying? And, sure. and you're helping some other person along, man. Yeah, no, I I I I I think that's I've said it, man. I feel like right now <clears throat> there's like three generations of Christian rappers active right now. Right. And it's never but here's the thing, when you look at the history of this, it's it's never really been like that to this extent. Right. You know what I mean? Like the guys that are, you know, over thirty five in the past, they was like fading hard. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. And it's like now, I mean, it's a lot of guys in that age range in our space. You can make the case they've never been bigger. You know what I right. mean. So, right. It's just a. It's a. I think it's a weird, kind of a weird thing. You know, an yeah. observation going yeah, it's on. It's an right interesting now. place to be. It's an interesting place to be. But yeah. but ultimately, I think though that you know. I think the key here is to be authentic, man. Like, yeah. You know, I think that's the key. Like, because if you got your own lane, be in that lane and people are going to go to you for that thing. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But I, I yep. think when you get to the point where, you know, cause a lot of the younger guys, you know, a lot of the younger guys coming up, you know, I think they're in a place in their creative space where they're kind of at that, you know, mimicking phase. Like they don't know exactly who they are yet. Yeah. You know, so they are trying to kind of, figure it all out um based upon what they see is already buzzing whereas when you get kind of to that second stage you know which i kind of believe i'm kind of more in the second stage in that yep. like i kind of i know what works for me and what doesn't work for me like i know i know what sounds i like and what sounds i would like to try to build on and then the ones that i really don't want nothing to do with like <laughs> and and i'm, I'm kind of at that place yeah and then, then you got the the ogs of the game uh i guess you could say the third generation is kind of like yo we here we've done what we need to do and you know we either are trying to shepherd you know a lot of the dudes is coming up and give them a hand up or you know we at the place where we we may you know try to try to try to see what the younger guys are doing and do our little twist to it you know and and all of them have their own level of effectiveness um i just you know for me personally i i kind of know who i am and what i want to accomplish um sure. and i got a lot of young people that look up to me in my church so like i know what they listening to just because of who they are yeah. <laughs> and uh you know i know um so i'm not you know trying to reach a certain demographic i just i just know what i could bring to that sound concept that's sure all. sure sure I, I was gonna ask you man I, I i know a lot of artists that i've talked to that are youth pastors they end up not being a youth pastor for long because they don't always like the week in week out life on life that it requires to 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 do that man and you you seem just even hearing you talk about it you seem like you really enjoy that kind of work man you know what it is man i think i just enjoy helping people man i think you know mm. i've got a you know i got a you know call to, to shepherd on my life for a long time and maybe more in the unconventional sense in that like i may not be the dude behind the pulpit but i, I tend to be the bridge and the connecting branch yep. between a lot of different people so you know i know a lot of people through a lot of people um, but because of that, you know, also being on the secular side, I'm willing to extend a lot more grace than some people, you know, who like to, to one of some of the guys that are the more, I guess, controversial figures in CHH, I'm willing to extend more grace because I deal with kids all the time you know I'm saying? who aren't, you know, you know, as solidified even in their faith. So, so I can talk to them like, Oh, okay. 
Word. Okay. Well, 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 talk to me about that. What, what's the reasoning behind that? You know, and then I can actually, you know, you know, reason with people a little bit more. Um, so, so for me, you know, dealing with young people, dealing with even young adults, cause a lot of young adults come my way as well. Um, dealing with them kind of helps me to stay grounded. And I, I joke about this now, but it's kind of wild, man. Like, my daughter, when I get home, like no matter what this album does, like my daughter, when I get home, she's like, dad, dad. And she need me to, you know, heat up some sweet potatoes and black, black beans. And my wife need me to brown turkey meat. So like, I ain't never been nobody, nobody famous. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so for me, for me, it don't, it ain't, you know, all right. So, oh, where are you on a flyer to do a show? My wife was just telling me, man, this week, she was like, yo, this is, oh man, this is like a real thing. People actually like it, what you do. And I was right. like, I was like, yeah, word. Like it's cause it's, it's kind of one of those, like when I leave outside of a recording booth or, or hop offline or whatever, like I got. I got family. I got carpet to vacuum and, you know, like I don't, I don't think about it too heavy. Like some people, I don't take myself too seriously. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think that's a good perspective, bro. Like when you can go home and you still got to take out the trash, that's always. Exactly. Humbling. That should be humbling, man. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> Absolutely should be, man. <laughs> that's always humbling, man. Christian yeah, Christian no wives that keep you humble, man. If you got a good one, they they will keep you humble, man. Man, my wife be like, turn the phone off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like straight up, like that. Like she be like, yo, cut the phone off. It's family time. Hilarious, man. Yeah, man. Hilarious, bro. So um I find it interesting too that you you went to fam, you was in a gospel choir, but you weren't yeah, really rap- yeah. you, but you weren't really rapping there though. Nah, nah. I mean, you know, I was listening to rap, you know what I'm saying? But I wasn't trying to apply rap. Yeah. Like it was just uh it was just one of those things, man. Like rap became more like interesting. I think uh, you know, once I got a chance to start trying to write down my thoughts, I sucked in the beginning. But like I thought it was dope though. Like you know what I'm saying? Like in hindsight, you hindsight know. being twenty twenty, you ain't know. You, you know? ain't it's know. Like, nobody told like, you. <laughs> yeah, nobody told. It was like, yo, even the dudes that I was rapping with, they was like, yo, that's kind of dope, son. Oh, like man. so, so I mean, <laughs> hindsight now because my mom's like, she scraped up the CD that we recorded, the mixtape that we did from the apartment complex. I was like, dang, I sucked. Like, so, but, but hey, it is what it is. Man, that is crazy, bro. Who who were some of your influences? Um, when I really, really tried to write and like be a rapper for real and try to get serious about it, um, I was a big little brother fan, man. Oh yeah, they like, were dope, like bro. my 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 favorite. They were so dope. Yeah, no doubt. Like my favorite rapper, like actually my personal top five like this ain't even no objective this yeah. is one of those okay this is my list like but fonte is in my personal top five one of my like, one of my favorite concerts i've ever been to in my life was and this is when knife was still with him this yeah. was on the first album on the listening they yeah. did a show at sob's yeah and sob's is like a 300 person venue like it's super yeah. small and i was like I was literally like right by the stage, bro. Like, yeah, that joint was amazing. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm telling you, man. Like Tay, Tay for real is like my. He's literally in my personal top five. Like, like that dude is how a lot of uh, a lot of my rhymes, a lot of my perspective comes from. Mm. You know, a level of rationale. I can see that. Yeah, it comes from a level of rationale that came a lot from uh tay you know what i'm saying uh, yeah. a lot of it came from that r swift r swift is a big fonte fan too yeah man i hear i hear a lot of uh i hear got a lot of good things about r swift too man yeah 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 that's interesting little brother who else um uh well you know when i was in college too you had the college dropout came out yep 
and, and like literally <laughs> that was all I listened to. Like, like but you stayed was, in school though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the college dropout, the minstrel show. Yeah. Like um the black album. Yep. Um, you got uh even even um even uh Beg for Mercy, the G Unit compilation yeah. came out at that time. Yep. Um so so those were the ones that really started. I mean, then I started listening to some Cassidy tapes and like those were the times where I was like trying to shape who I was as a rapper, mm-hmm. like what I wanted to bring. Um, so those are probably, you know, to this day, like even because everybody That's an eclectic talks, mix too, though. Yeah. You know, it's why like everybody boosts up the blueprint, right? Jay-Z's the blueprint. Yep. Like I didn't really appreciate it until after I started trying to become a better rapper. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I knew the songs, yep. but I didn't appreciate it until yep. I finally got to the point where I was like, like Elzai is one of my, one of my favorite rappers. Yeah. Like Elzai is dumb nice. Well, you, I um, mean, you, you, you were, is there's one thing to listen to music just to listen to music to enjoy it. There's another yeah. one to listen you to You start picking people's brains, yeah. Well, to be inspired by the artistry or just to peep the artistry, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, no doubt. So, like, even for me, honestly, as a DJ, it's hard for me to just sit and listen to music. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm listening to, I, I can't. It's rare I can just sit and enjoy music because I'm either listening to music thinking, man, that would be dope to sample if it's not hip hop or <laughs> would I yeah. mix this or, you know what I mean? Like, so it's it's just, you know, I feel you. Yeah. You hear it differently. Yeah, no doubt. So so that was, that's that's kind of, that was kind of my primary, like, you know, like, oh, yay. Like late registrations, you know, changed, yeah. changed a lot of my perspective, man. Uh, yeah. You know, um, I knew that, you know, I I kind of evaluate rappers, though, based upon, like, if I feel like I can do what they do. Mm. Um, if if I feel like I can do what they do, a part of me feels like I've been robbed of my like, my admiration, like wow. <laughs> my opportunity, because because I was studying like like there was a point where I was studying other rappers I'm not I'm not studying rappers anymore per se, sure, but sure. but there were rappers I was listening to to be like, yo, that cadence is fire. Like you know, I like that slant rhyme he's using. Like I like his setups. You know, now I don't really listen for that anymore. But but there was a time where I was doing that, and I started to feel like, man, I could do that. And then they started kind of going down the the personal scale. Yo, you're like a you're a researcher, bro. Yeah, no doubt. What was your major? Um, nah, man, I was actually an English major, man. Like, <laughs> I, I didn't have see nothing that, to do with music at all, man. It was oh. English, English, uh, you know, not not English ed, but just English. I actually went to school initially to try to get into broadcast journalism, though. Wow. Wow, interesting. English major turned rapper. Slash youth pastor. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely got in the uh, youth ministry. Like once me, once me and my wife had our daughter, um, I stepped down uh, from youth ministry just, just to kind of focus on the home life. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I, I'm still always really hands on with the youth. Yeah, amazing, bro. That's amazing, man. Um, <clears throat> you ever think you could be a senior pastor? If I ever get called to that place, you know, I'm pretty sure uh, I, I guess I'll be I wouldn't be sin if it wasn't for me to go. So I, I just haven't had that that call <laughs> um, to the to the senior pastor position, Sure, um, you know, but at the same time, I believe husbands are pastors at their homes, man. So mm. like I, I'm, you know, I'm shepherding every single day, um, whether I. You know, you just extrapolate that a little bit once you get to church ministry and senior leadership and stuff like that. So if I got called the senior pastor, you know, um, I, I'm I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be called if I wasn't ready for it. So, Well, that's real. Sometimes we do get called when we're not ready. But <laughs> God, God make us ready. You know what I mean? Exactly my point, right? Yeah. Like exactly my point. Yeah, he make us ready, man. So, um. What's all your what's your thoughts, man, on all this stuff happening with our brand new president, Donald Trump, man? Uh well I, I kind of referenced it on the album, man. Like 
I, you know, one thing's for sure, two things for certain. It don't matter who the president is. The law is working. So, yeah. um, you know, I kind of I kind of look at it a little different. Like, you know, I think that you have plenty of examples in the Bible, you know, where you've got guys that are under tyrannical leadership um, and Christians that still have to operate and be functional in society. Um, I think the purpose of that, though, is for us to be a light when everybody else just wants to, you know, respond with a vengeance and be angry and, you know, uh, belligerent in reference to uh, our leaders. I think there's a purpose for us, you know, to continue to serve in these capacities. Um, You know, I think it's kind of wild. I don't think any of these presidents, I don't think the president Trump is anywhere near as, you know, hard as the media allows him to be depicted. I think what happened is social media happened. Like, so we see everything. Like, you know, there was a time where you couldn't get this news unless it was on like a magazine or a newspaper. Right. But like, but like now, ah oh man, this stuff pops up, you know, every two seconds. Like you, you go on Twitter, man, your live feed is instant. Yep. You know, and so or your so notifications it, on your phone. Right. And I think it I think it kind of creates a culture in which, you know, people think that this is, you know, doom and gloom all the time. And, you know, I mean, yeah, it might be it might be pretty bad, but I'm pretty sure that I'm not under the same thumb as, you know, uh, Governor Sessions, you know, when you know, when MLK was trying to do anything like. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, you know, like I'm pretty sure that it's a lot different than when I, you know, didn't have a right to vote whatsoever. Um, so I can't say how bad it is, you know, because my ministry is this home and these young people I've been placed over. So like, I, I kind of got a, uh, you know, the requirement to just be a light everywhere, man. Like even even if I don't agree with every decision that's popping up. Yeah, I mean, one one of the things that I think has kind of bothered me just around what's happening right now is that you you see you see people that that literally and these are Christians, like non Christians. I I get it, but when I see Christians who are like, "Yo, I'm afraid," I'm like, "Yeah, you got your faith in the wrong place, cause." Yeah. Yeah. I, I can see that. Um, you know, it's interesting, man. I think I think sometimes people loosely use verbiage, uh, you know, and they, they start saying, you know, things that, you know, are sensationalist in nature. You know, like, I'm scared. Like, I'm, you know, this, this worries me. And, you know, I, I mean, but at the same time, there's a level of grace that still, you know, I always feel inclined to give. It's like, you know, rather affirm them. Like, yo, you don't have anything to be scared of. Right. Like, you know, those are, that tends to be my, my rebuttal more often than not. It's like, it's like now, now if a, if a minister or a pastor start saying mm. things, I think there's a different, you know, a different method, right. And, and how to engage. Um, just because I feel like there, you should know better. You know what I'm saying? But I think for, for the vast majority of people that say they're concerned, I just try to hear them for what their concern is and, you know, pray for them if I can. And, you know, when you go into the prayer closet, man, you pray about those kind of things, man. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's, I think that's I think that's the right perspective, man. Definitely think man. that's the right perspective, bro. It's it's I, I it's just I think we've. um We've entered a season where. It seems like almost everything is politicized now. Mm-hmm. And so there's like I think an extra layer of tension that has become um apparent or evident simply because of that, because of the I think over politic politi- just everything being over politicized. You know right. what I'm saying? It was like right. You know, it was like in the primaries, right? There was division. Then, oh yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. And oh, it's yeah. like some of this is all, all always existed, but what I think is just weird for me is that it's just so evident now. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell you something. Like to to piggyback off of that, the thing that I think these times really have 
given to me, believers, an opportunity to do is truly draw a stark contrast between, you know, uh, those of the faith and those that are not. Sure. Like it's given us, it's given us very clear opportunities to be distinctive in where we stand, you know, um, and because a lot of things that are becoming very, very popular on social issues, like we're having to genuinely stand firm on the word in these instances, um, but also be able to navigate how to have the conversation despite our disagreement. Um, one of my favorite quotes is uh, the distance between expectation and reality is conflict. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when you get to the point where, you know, society has its own levels of expectations, like men have their own standards, women have their own standards, believers have their own standards, non-believers, but the, the conflict starts in the nuances. It's in the in-between stuff. Because I'm a firm believer that most believers, no matter where you stand on doctrine, most of us can agree on the vast majority of things. Yep. But the, the, the conflicts uh, come within the nuances, like those imperceptible, you know, little pieces, tidbits of information, you know, the, the you know, micromanaging, you know, microaggressive terms that we use, you know, parsing words. You know, like those kind of things create conflict. And I think the distance between those two has to be prayer. It has to be God, man. Like, because if we don't create that, uh, that clear distinction of the fact that we're not perfect and we're not uh, expected to be perfect, but we're called and expected to be gracious and to love one another. Like if we can't marry those two things together, you know, we're going to have some problems for a long time and it's not going to get any better. Yeah. No, you're right about that, brother. You are definitely right about that, man. Um, I know you got your album release party coming up, man. Um, it's, it's a bit pretty big deal, bro. <laughs> yeah, you know it seems uh, seems like it is, man. The word circulating around circulating around the city, so you know it should be uh, it should be dope. Yeah, man. Um, I mean, listen, you know, I, you know, I know you were telling me before we got on the air. One of the things about where you live is you know, there's not always the opportunity to have those kind of events there, bro. And so yeah. um, I just want to salute you for even trying to bring that type of energy to your city because you could, you very easily could have just said, yo, let's, let's go up to D.C. and have this, or let's go down to Richmond, or let's go down to Virginia Beach and have this, as opposed to, to really trying to, you know, put on for the city. Right, yeah, no doubt. I mean, build a door, man. Like, if it ain't one there, build one. Like, yeah. I just kind of look at it like, you know, maybe this is just a pilot for something bigger for the community, man. Like, you know, we don't even get hip-hop shows in this area. Like, wow. let alone Christian hip-hop shows. Wow. But we don't we don't get hip-hop shows to come in this area. You know, so so the fact that we doing both here, ah, man, like, it's, it should be something dope. Yeah, that's big, man. I mean, look, man, I, I, I'll say this, bro. Um one of the things that I've noticed about not even just Christian music, but even a lot of like really big Christian like pastors and stuff like that, when they do like their tours, like if you look at somebody like a Joyce Meyer or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Look at the cities that she goes to. It's rare they go to like really big cities. Now, Joe Osteen's different, but yeah. a lot of other people that like put on their own events and all that. Mm -hmm. They go to smaller places. So, you know, you might be on to something, brother. You never know, man. We could be. Yeah, you could be. You could definitely be on to something, man. Well, listen, man. Um, you know, this was a this was a pleasure, man. Um, I know we had kind of met briefly at the Kingdom Choice Awards, man, but it was definitely good to kind of have an extended conversation with you, brother. And you know, I, I definitely wish you the best, bro. Oh man, I appreciate that, man. Absolutely, bro. On the way to radio show. On the way to radio. On the way to radio show. Where's much more music? It's ministry.